Hey everyone, before we get started today, I just want to point out that I just released another video on my vlog channel. For those of you that didn't know that I vlog myself when I drive bus trips, go check it out, youtube.com slash jwangvlogs. I will put the link down in the description box below. Now, I didn't actually carry any passengers on this trip, but rather I drove a coach to do a promotional launch for a few friends of mine who started a talk show channel on YouTube called Join the Chat. The three ladies, Cindy, Molly, and Janet, started this channel for women, and they discussed different topics on each episode with the goal to get people connected again in an age where everyone has become distant from each other. It's actually pretty cool, and I recommend that you guys go check it out. If any of you are interested in joining the chat, I'll put the link to the channel down in the description box below, and it should also be popping up here somewhere sometime right now. Now let's roll that intro and get started with today's show. Hey, what is going on all of you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. Americans like their extra large. I can't tell you how many times I've heard my friends visiting me here in the US from Europe or Asia comment on how much larger everything here is in America. Larger roads, larger apartments or houses, larger cars, larger portions at the dinner table, which means larger waistlines. You can tell this thing was not on Jenny Craig. For a lot of things in the US, bigger is better. But sometimes we do tend to get carried away. My God, that's a big ship. Today we're gonna go back in time a few decades and take a look at the MC6 Super Cruiser. The coach that was built too wide to be driven on the roads and also the coach that paved the way. Between the early 1950s and late 1960s, Greyhound was a symbol of tourism in the US. It was an icon for fun road trips and a lifeline for the little towns to connect with the larger cities. The name Greyhound was a commonly spoken word at the dinner table all over the US that conjured up topics of adventure and excitement. It was a booming time for the motor coach industry. One of the buses that was commonly seen traveling the highways from the mid 1950s to the 70s was the iconic GM PD 4501 Scenic Cruiser. Produced by a collaboration of General Motors and Greyhound lines, the Scenic Cruiser during those days was a symbol of the modern era for motor coach design. Originally conceptualized to be a 35 foot coach with a single rear axle, GM added a second rear axle extending the original prototype design to be 40 feet long, but that was a bit of a problem. You see, during the 1950s, federal highway regulations limited the length of all buses built to 35 feet long and no wider than 96 inches wide. Before GM could start rolling the scenic cruisers off the assembly line and into their customers' hands, they had to convince the highway administration to lift the restrictions on the 35 feet rule, and they succeeded. GM started production of the Scenic Cruiser during 1954, and the last one rolled off the assembly line around 1956, with a total of 1,001 of them built. Despite the iconic look of the multi-level body, which was a trend during those days for coach buses, as well as the popularity of the Scenic Cruiser amongst the passengers, Greyhound was actually somewhat unsatisfied with the reliability of these buses. Over their service life, they had common problems with their powertrain as well as cracked frames. Because of this, by 1959, Greyhound adopted MCI, or Motor Coach Industries, as its sole provider for its motor coach fleet, even though there were still many GM Scenic Cruisers still in service. By the mid-1960s, Greyhound's fleet of Scenic Cruisers were starting to show their age. They were the backbone and workhorses of Greyhound's fleet for a good 10 years at this point, despite all their design flaws. By 1965, Greyhound was looking for a new coach to replace their aging PD 4501 Scenic Cruiser fleet. By 1965, GM's competitor in the bus industry, MCI, had just started production of the MC5. Beginning production in 1964, the MC5 was only 35 feet long, which had become the old standard as far as bus length goes. GM's 40-foot-long PD4501 Scenic Cruiser had set the bar higher when it came to length, and this was now the new trend for what motor coach companies were looking for. The MC5 also had a few setbacks. 
for a 35-foot coach, the turning radius was actually really large. Drivers had to really plan out their turns to make it work, especially if the turn was tight. By 1966, the MC5 had only been in production for one year. And while production of the MC5 was still going on, MCI decided to go back to the drawing board to design the new buses of the future. MCI came up with two new designs, the MC6 Super Cruiser and the MC7 Challenger. I just love how bus models got all these cool names back in the day. Scenic Cruiser, Super Cruiser, Challenger. I wonder why they just give them numbers now. I think MCI should name their next coach model Defiant. Yeah. It's the Defiant. In 1967, MCI, in collaboration with Greyhound, built two prototype test models and called them the MCX6. The X in the model number indicating that these were experimental. They were 40 feet long, stood at a height of 12 feet tall, and they were 102 inches wide, which was unheard of at the time. The design of the coach at the time was extremely futuristic and modern. It looked like something out of a Star Wars movie. That thing's operational. Of the two prototypes, the first one was equipped with a GM Detroit 12V71 engine, and the second one was equipped with a Mercedes-Benz 8 engine. When the actual production models of the MC6 Super Cruiser rolled off the assembly lines in 1968, all of them were powered with the GM Detroit 12V71 engines, which were really powerful for a bus. Paired with either a Spicer or Fuller manual transmission, this gave the motor coach amazing performance, although at a cost of horrible fuel consumption. Nicknamed the Buzzin' Dozen, the engines produced over 400 horsepower and 1,200 feet of torque. Later, the MC6 supercruisers that served Greyhound in the US were re-engined with the newer Detroit 8V71T engine with an automatic Allison transmission. The supercruisers that service Greyhound in Canada, however, never got the upgrades and remained with their original Detroit 12V71 engines with the manual transmissions. The MC6 supercruisers were built with two axles in the rear to compensate for its 40-foot chassis, as well as to add stability on the road. Now, the two prototypes had the third axle covered by a body panel, but later production models had the third wheel exposed. Full production of the MC6 Supercruiser started in 1968, and production stopped shortly in just 1969, with only 102 of them built, all of which were put into service for Greyhound, 85 of them in the US and 15 for Canada. They were the largest and most powerful motor coaches to hit the road until 1985 when MCI produced the A102A3 and the Eagle Model 15. The multi-step design on coaches was a popular trend between the 1960s and early 70s, as mentioned before. But the Super Cruiser actually featured three different multi-step areas. The first level was the entrance and driver's area. Then immediately behind the driver's seat, the first passenger seating level was raised. Then one additional step up to a more elevated seating area from the middle to the rear of the coach. From the outside, this is noticeable by the two raised areas on the roof, the highest point being 12 feet tall. Greyhound and MCI designed the MC6 Super Cruisers to be 102 inches wide, which as mentioned before was unheard of at the time. It was a groundbreaking design that would lead to the standard 102 inch wide coach bodies that are in service today. However, during the late 60s, most states in the US had a interstate highway maximum vehicle width limit of 96 inches. You see, at the time, a few states in the US on the east and west coast, as well as Canada, had recently increased their interstate width limit to 102 inches. Greyhound and MCI mistakenly assumed that the rest of the other states would follow suit and increase their width limitations to 102 inches as well. This, however, was not the case, and many states remained with their 96 inch limit for how wide a bus could be. The MC6 supercruisers were simply six inches too far ahead of its time. And because of that, only 102 of them were ever built. Two of them were the original prototypes. 85 of them serviced Greyhound lines in the US, operating routes initially on the East Coast, and later were all sent to operate routes on the West Coast. The remaining 15 operated routes in Canada. Because of all the red tape, production of the MC6 supercruiser ended shortly in 1969, less than one year after they started. By the 1980s, Greyhound retired all of their MC6 supercruisers from their fleet, and they were sold to independent motor coach companies. 
The MC7 was designed roughly the same time as the MC6 Supercruisers, being the alternative, less controversial option, and it paid off. While retaining the more modern 40-foot length, the MC7 Challenger steered away from the more controversial 102-inch wide body at the time and was designed with a 96-inch wide body. While the MC6 Supercruisers were largely experimental and produced in small numbers due to all the body width backlash, the MC7 Challenger started production in 1968 with over 2,500 units produced. The last MC7 rolled off the production line in 1973 with a good six years of production. The MC6 Supercruiser and the MC7 Challenger both shared the title of being the first 40-foot coach to ever be produced by MCI, even though the MC6 Supercruiser prototypes were created a year earlier. I kind of think the MC6 Supercruiser deserved that title, and I call BS on that one. Years later, by 1976, the Federal Aid Highway Act increased the allowable width for buses to 102 inches all across the U.S. But sadly, it was too late for the Supercruiser to retain any of its fame. By this time, the MC6 Supercruisers were already starting to be phased out from Greyhound's fleet, and MCI was already building its next model of coaches, the MC8 Crusader, which was also 96 inches wide, by the way. Such a badass name for buses, Crusader. The MC6 Supercruiser wide body experiment also seemed to have left a bad taste with MCI as well. I say this because MCI continued to build 96 inch wide coaches until 1986, 10 years after the Federal Highway Administration allowed 102 inch wide bodies on the road. The first mass produced 102 inch wide body coach by MCI was the MCI 102A2 which incorporated the modernized cockpit and nose of what would eventually become the reliable and infamous MCI 102DL3. If any of you know why this was the case, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to know. Well folks, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you feel like I've stated any facts incorrectly, please feel free to point it out down in the comment box below. After all, I am in this to learn as well. I wanna take a quick moment to Thank everyone for their great comments that I've been getting. Also, those of you who are sending me pictures of buses, at the beginning of every episode, I will show one of your pictures on my intro. So please keep those pictures coming. As always, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. It tells YouTube that people like my channel and YouTube will then change its algorithms to help my channel grow. Also, thank you to all of you who have been so kind to become patrons for my channel. Your contributions are definitely going towards new camera and sound equipment, as well as coffee to keep me caffeinated. If you want to support my channel and all the hours I put into these videos, consider being a patron yourself on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash motorcoach. For as low as pledging a dollar a month, you can help a fellow bus nut geek and enthusiast out and help me make more quality content for you guys. And as always, guys, if you're watching this, you are part of the motor coach world.